welcome to the first episode of Life with M Jam. This is what I'm going to call my blog. I think what I'm going to do is post every month on the 25th. I'll talk about two books I've read the previous month. I'm repeat, talk about two teas that I'm steeping and then share a devotional thought. I'll also be open to what you guys want to hear about. So I want to talk about two books that I've been reading this past month. The first one is called The Insanity of God by Nick Ripkin. And it sounds heretical, but it's not. So it's, how do I describe this book? So The Insanity of God is Nick's personal story about how he found the Lord as a high school senior and then and then felt called to the mission field and and he met and he met his wife at Bible college and she felt called to go um serve in the mission field starting in sixth grade so like so what you're like 13 in sixth grade so since she was 13 she knew she wanted to go serve in Africa so um so Nick and his wife Sarah, as they call themselves, it's actually a pseudonym because what they talk about in the book is so sensitive that they changed everyone's names in most of the locations. But anyway, Nick and Sarah go to serve in Somalia and there is such a heavy um, militant uh, Islamic um, oppressive presence that, that like, they, they can't even find find like five to eight um, believers in Christ um, to to form a local church body. But but they but they do but they do meet believers in the country. There are some who come to profess a uh, faith in Jesus. Um, some crazy stuff happens. I don't want to spoil the book but but a really big suffering rock your world thing happens to Nick and Sarah. And they and they go back home and they serve as an RD couple at the school um, where where they met and in in talking with the students and one thing I love about college students is their passion to change the world but more importantly the passion for Christ and when you put those two ingredients together a passion for Christ and a passion to change the world dynamic things happen. So in their relationship with these college students, Nick and Sarah feel like, wow, we want to go encourage the persecuted church. So, um, and Nick has a background in research and interviewing people. And so, so, he, so he flies all over the world, um, China, Asia, um, different um, Middle Eastern countries. That he that he didn't even name or try to name, and he and he talked to thousands upon thousands of persecuted believers, and not only that, but he sees he sees things that we only hear of described in the Book of Acts happen in front of his eyes. He sees um, people healed, um, people finding um, Bibles on on the sidewalk. Um, people being called to go meet material needs of others that they don't even know, but getting very specific directions of how to find them. And it, it was, it was just amazing. And guys, like, like that made me think, like, we in America are so blessed with so many, like, financial and spiritual resources, but yet the Holy Spirit doesn't move, um, here like he does in other countries. I don't know if it's because... God's so much more needed in a very real practical sense, whereas we as American Christians, and I'm throwing myself in this own book, are more are more likely to uh, rely on ourselves. Um, so I don't know. It just it just made me think, and I think a lot of you guys would enjoy reading this book. So link down in the description. Um, the second book that I want to talk about is actually my devotional book for this year. Is by uh, Christine Kane, and it's a 365 um, day devotional. What I what I like what I like about this book is she Christine will open with a scripture and then a devotional thought tied to that scripture and then a suggested prayer at the end. And um, 
similar to Sarah Young's Jesus Calling, what what Christine does is like she'll take a week or maybe two weeks and focus on a topic. So the first week, not the first week, so like last week that was Valentine's week, we focused on God's love, and so Christine talked discussed that topic from several different angles, like. The, like the steadfast love of God, the fatherly love of God, etc., etc. So, so if so, if you really want to be challenged and encouraged in your faith, I highly recommend checking out uh, that book. And again, description down below. So, so these are the two teas I want to talk about this month. Yes, they're Christmas teas. So those of you that know me and my love for Christmas can chuckle about that. But the first one is called Comfort and Joy, and the second one is called Peppermint Bark. These are both by Republic of Tea, and they're both some of my favorites. So the Comfort and Joy has caffeine in it, so for those of you who aren't morning people, this is your jam. It's got nutmeg and clove and cinnamon, so it's a very like Victorian punch kind of thing. But it's a, it's a good way to jumpstart your morning on a cold winter day. And this peppermint bark, I remember when it came out about two years ago, I was like, dude, did that actually taste like the peppermint bark candy? And guess what, guys? It does. Like, if someone liquidizes a piece of peppermint bark chocolate and put it in your um, teacup, it would taste exactly like that. No fooling. So I'll add the links to these teas down below in the description. But yeah, that's what I've been steeping. So my devotional thought this month is about John 9, 1 through 3. Surprise! Said no one ever. So, okay. <laughs> so, um, so John 9, 1 through 3 says, As he passed by, his disciples saw a man born blind. Rabbi, they said, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither, Jesus replied, rather, uh, rather this man was born blind, so that works of God might be displayed in him. So, um, and in my blog post today, um, if you guys saw that, again, link in the description below, um, I, I talk about we all feel like, like we're not enough sometimes, like, like, I'm, like, I'm not enough of a communicator, maybe it's for me, um, you know, I could change things around or be more polished, or maybe, you know, I'm not enough of an educator, I don't meet my students' needs well, or, oh my goodness, I'm a nurse working on the floor, I'm a doctor, I'm like, my vocera keeps going off, and I feel like I'm running around, but am I actually making an impact? And guys, this is something I've been thinking about for myself, and... Um, I just want to share it with you guys. But you know, maybe you're just having a moment, maybe for the fifth time the hour, where you don't, where you feel like you're not enough. So you can just feel like, man, okay, this is frustrating. But let me, but let me bring that not enoughness to God. Maybe, maybe it's your your kid saying, Mom, why for the fifteenth time in five minutes? Or or may, or maybe it's your husband and you're like, honey. Where's the ketchup? And you're like, I just bought ketchup yesterday at Kroger. Move things around and find it. Like, just um, just be like, okay, God, this is me. This is what I'm frustrated with. But I really want to serve you. And I really want to show other people your your love in this situation. Just take take my burnt outness. Take my frustration. Take my I'm going to scream in five seconds. If I can't get some peace and quiet feeling. And just, and just be glorified in this situation and God might be glorified maybe in a gentle response to someone else. Um, he might be glorified in that doctor or that nurse or that teacher saying, wow, that sounds like hard circumstance. Tell me, tell me more about that. Like, just like all, all God needs is a willing person, guys. So just be like, okay, God, here I am in all of my hot messness. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is the not enough and all my hotnessness and I want to serve you and love others so show me what to do in this instance. And like God might not show you what to do in that next five steps but he'll show you what to do in that one step and that's enough. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.